just like that. Woo! Oh no! Oh. Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. It's another beautiful day here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains and we've got some maintenance to do on the 240 tractor. So this is our Massey Ferguson 240 tractor. I haven't looked up the serial number to tell you the exact year, but I think we're somewhere in the 84, 1986 range. So it's about a 35 year old tractor. Come along today as we do a full service on this tractor. We'll change the oil, we'll change the fuel filters, we'll change the oil filters, Filter, we'll lubricate it and we'll walk you around this pretty cool old tractor. This will probably double as a service video for the Massey Ferguson 135 tractor. They're very similar platform. The 135 is the older type model. This is the newer model. All right. Massey Ferguson, contact. I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. Let the tractor warm up a little bit probably to about 110 degrees 115 degrees that way the oil flows out nicely the oil hasn't been changed in this tractor for probably two years which we're behind on it we bought it about a year and a half ago and it's only had about 50 hours on it since the oil changed got some other cool toys here that we'll be working on on the farm that's my baby right there Maybe had to move out so we could get in here and service this tractor. So we've been using the Massey Ferguson 240 over the last few days. We've been using our aerator attachment. There'll be a link to that video at the end of this video, but we've been using it and I just felt kind of guilty not changing the oil in it. It doesn't really leak any oil. It's a very clean tractor, very nice tractor. When we get done servicing it, I'll take you around and show you all the little details, how cool it is. Really, really nice tractor, completely restored, even though it only had 800 hours on it. So let me show you what we're doing, what we're changing the oil in and what the old oil looks like. And you can see it's a little bit low on the dipstick there and it's really black. Now that's not something that would be out of the ordinary for a diesel engine, especially of this vintage. So something we got to think about is how often do we service this tractor? Do we service it every 200, every 250 or every 100 hours? And I say every year or every 100 hours, depending on the amount of time that you use this tractor, depending on the amount of hours that you put it on. This is our second tractor, our primary tractor is our Ventrac or our John Deere 5065E. The 5065E is a 2014 model and the tolerances on a newer tractor versus an older tractor are much, much different. The technology used to build this old Perkins diesel engine versus the newer John Deere engine, there are a lot lower tolerances. In other words, the John Deere engine is a little bit tighter, I guess. Now this is a great, great engine. However, the oil changes probably need to be a little bit more frequent on this older engine. So we'll change it every 100 hours. Just like on the Ventrac, it's a smaller diesel engine. It's a small Kubota engine and we change it every 100 hours too because the smaller the engine, the higher the revs. This engine in order to produce 540 PTO is about 1700 RPMs versus the John Deere engine is about 23, 2400 RPMs. Don't quote me on that exactly, but you can go to tractordata.net or .com and it'll tell you all sorts of fun stuff. So let's drain the oil out. We'll pull off the old oil filter and we'll check our fuel filter and our fuel water separator. This is our oil filter. This is our secondary fuel filter and our primary fuel filter. And here's what the fuel filter looks like. We'll be changing both of these because I just don't know how many hours were on it the last time they were changed. But basically that fits up into this compartment right here. We'll show you how to do all that stuff. We'll show you how to bleed the system. Basically when you take out a fuel filter in a diesel tractor like like this you're gonna have to make sure there's no air bubbles in the fuel system if there are air bubbles that can cause you some serious serious headaches and having to bleed lines all the way through to the injectors we don't want to fool with all that so we'll show you how to do it the right way I hope <laughs> every video I've seen on the internet about doing this has been poorly explained and has been uh, just poorly done in in my opinion i mean they're they're farmers and they're doing their job they're doing what they're supposed to do but the audio is really bad they're not explaining things as they go through it and i hope you guys can appreciate me explaining this to you and again after the video we'll show you a little more detail about the tractor but for those of you guys that are here just to learn how to service this tractor we'll go from top to bottom front to back and show you what to do two things i think every person who owns property land farm house anything needs to have is a little log book a little logbook like this that tells you 
when you changed the oil, what kind of oil you used, what the capacity was, just for your lawn mowers, your push mowers, for anything and everything, you need to know this stuff. And also the best investment I could possibly tell you to make to save yourself time and to save yourself thought because you don't wanna to have to think about this stuff all the time. You don't wanna think, ah, when's the next service on this tractor? You wanna make sure you keep on top of it. And right here is how you keep on top of it. Get yourself a label maker, make yourself a nice label for each one of your filters and keep track of it in a log book. If you keep good records, you'll get a better value for your tractor when you get ready to sell it and you'll also be able to keep track of what's going on on your place there is a lot of equipment here on this farm and we've got to take care of it another thing that i think is a must is having a tote a tote that you can grab for doing all of your services all this stuff is stuff that i use frequently for oil changes and gearbox service it's all in here and all i have to do is grab this bin and I have it. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our handy dandy adjustable wrench. We're gonna get on here and we're gonna loosen up our nut just like so. Guess what? I pre loosened it just for you. We'll drain out the oil. Supposedly this takes around seven quarts. Now I wonder if we have a magnet on the bottom of this drain plug. That would really be cool. Nope, no magnet. As you can see, oil is pretty black but again it's a diesel we'll take this and wipe it clean kind of some nasty looking stuff there huh so we'll slide a second oil drain pan underneath our oil filter i've got two different kinds of oil filter wrench i can use this one right here no problem it kind of stabs on it a little bit or i have this kind right here and this is a oil filter eye cap wrench i'll show you so it's fluted so that it fits right over the oil filter and we can just screw it right off. The new oil filter does not have those flutes on it. Very gentle until we can get it with our hands. We're going to make a little bit of a mess, but probably not too bad. I like to use a special kind of pan for this so that I can set my oil filter down. I'll show you. This is the type of pan I like to use for my oil filters so I don't have to worry about them sitting way down in a deep pan like this guy right here. Don't have to worry about that. So we're using all Napa gold filters. This is a 1460. And what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of oil and we'll dab onto our gasket right here. Maybe a little bit more wouldn't hurt it. But what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna fill our oil filter full of oil before we reinstall it and i've got this nifty little transfer canister here Whoop. <laughs> we can do that without making a mess we're in good shape a couple drips good to go <laughs> okay we'll reinstall gently and carefully very very nice we don't want our tractor to run dry of oil or with low oil pressure at any time so we don't want to take any kind of risk we'll fill up our oil filter if it's a vertical oil filter like that i always fill the oil filter before i reinstall it or hydraulic filter too if it's sideways obviously you can't do that when we get done here we're going to put labels on all these filters here's the oil filler neck i like to take my rag and wipe it down take it loose wipe out there it says gloucestershire no, it says Wolverhampton, England on there. That's pretty cool. This time we'll go on and replace our plug. Now you don't have to loosen this cap to let the oil drain out. It'll drain out. We'll replace our plug real quick. We wanna inspect our plug and make sure that this little washer right here is in good shape. Sometimes it'll be brass. Sometimes it'll be aluminum. In this case, I think it's aluminum. The manual said between six and a half and seven quarts. So we'll put six and a half in, start it up, and then we'll check it again. We are using T6 Rotella. They say common sense isn't so common nowadays, but I find if I'm gonna put seven quarts in here, then I'm gonna fill it up to about three and a half and about three and a half, instead of filling it all the way up to the brim and taking a chance on spilling it. I have spilled it before. So if you've got something that takes six quarts or five quarts, you don't have to fill this up to four quarts at first, just fill it up to half. That way it's not so full, you don't take a chance in spilling. All right, now we'll check our oil, see where we're at. I can see, I think we're going to be a little bit on the low side. We are within operating range. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. We'll keep an eye on this the next few uh, times we fire the tractor up, make sure that we're in good shape. Now there are a ton of lubrication points on this tractor. Your tractor may be different than mine, but we'll go around and we'll show you some of the lubrication points and then we'll get to the fuel filter. The fuel filter is probably the most complex part of this, but we also want to inspect a few things under the hood, the battery compartment, and a few other things. We'll take you around and show you that before we start messing with the fuel filter. That's gonna be the most complex part of this. Whether you're working on a 240 or a 135, you're gonna have similar lubrication points on these tractors. So inside right here are two tubes that go through to the uh, rotating assembly on the front axle. You may not have that if you have a 135 and you may not have that if you don't have power steering. Just so you know, that's one of the most overlooked areas to lubricate is this rotating assembly on this solid front axle. We'll just juice it up a little bit. I'll probably put four good squirts in here and you can hear it as it squirts it in listen so that was five Whoop. good deal there's also a lubrication point on each axle I recommend wiping off each lubrication point just get yourself one of these boxes of disposable towels I'll post links down in the video description to all these goodies if you want to service this tractor you already have all the goodies and you don't need them. Now together, let's go through and inspect the various compartments and the various things that we need to check on this tractor. So we'll open up the grill and this is basically a screen to catch hay and straw and seeds and stuff like that. We wanna inspect and make sure that we're nice and clean in here and that our grill is nice and clean. If it's not, then we need to blow it out, okay? Very good. We need to open up our coolant and check and look and see if this is all rusted and crusty and nasty and see if we need any coolant. I see coolant down there. And behind the scenes, I already went in and checked that out real good and we actually topped it off. Now we wanna inspect, and this is something that I noticed we're gonna need, is a new fuel cap. If you look under this fuel cap, you see that rust and crust? That is not good. So we're ordering a new fuel cap for this machine. We wanna go through here and we wanna inspect our belts, make sure they're tight enough and make sure they're not cracking and worn. That looks pretty good. We're also gonna open up our battery compartment right here, just like so. We're gonna look down in at our battery. Now I see the same thing that you see, corrosion on both battery terminals, and we'll check inside here and make sure that we're all topped off with distilled water in our battery. It's not a maintenance-free battery. We are required to have some distilled water. This will need addressing, but we'll pull it out of the shop before we do that. Next thing we want to do is go down here, and I've already pre-loosened this, but this is where your air filter is. So we'll open this guy up, and we'll slide out our air filter. There's a little tab right there. We just pull it out, and we'll inspect it, see how clean it is, see how dirty it is, replace it if it needs to be replaced. There is also inside here a pre-filter. That pre-filter can be removed by loosening this, nut right here this wing nut and you can inspect that and replace it if it needs to be replaced it's in good shape this thing's in really good shape this tractor doesn't have a lot of hours on it since the last service very good now one thing that i do notice is some cracking right here on that primary filter so we will be replacing this in 150 hours. So we're inspecting electrical wires also, and we're also looking at this guy right here. This is our fuel pump, and this is what we will use, this little lever, that's what we'll use to pump all the air out of the fuel system here in just a minute. Here comes the messy part. <laughs> there are your fuel filters on the left-hand side of the tractor, and this is the fuel shut off. So we will turn that to shut off fuel. This takes a 7 16 wrench. We'll loosen our nut on the top here. We should start seeing a little bit of fuel run out the bottom. Basically this nut, you'll see it goes down in here and holds this in place. Pretty interesting. Okay, there we go. Got a little bit of fuel leakage. We've got this cover off the bottom of the fuel filter. We want to inspect that, make sure it's nice and clean. Take a clean rag and wipe it out good. Make note of the rubber gasket right here in place, okay? We'll pull the old fuel filter. It should just pop right down, just like so. There's also a rubber gasket right up in here. We'll get you a close up of that. So you've got a little O-ring right up here and you wanna remove that O-ring gently. You can see the O-ring just snapped 
when we took it off. You will repeat that procedure for both filters, okay? The other filter has more gaskets and this includes all the gaskets in case you're doing a primary filter or a secondary filter. And I do believe it has a tiny O-ring to fit over top of the bolt that holds everything in place. Yep, it does. And you can see there's the old one. It's all crustified and there is the new one. We'll take the old one off and put a new one in place. Little tip, if you don't break these O-rings, hang on to them just in case you make a boo-boo while you're installing this, you've still got an extra ring. This is the O-ring that goes up around that we just showed you. And now we have three O-rings, all the same size right here. And we'll put those in place. We'll put a little motor oil on those from our oil change and we'll get them in place. Here's the old one. Bloop. Pull that guy out and place our new O-ring in where the old guy was. A little bit of oil on that or diesel. Either way. Slide it up into place. Make sure it fits in snugly. Now we'll repeat the process over here with the exception of we have a water fuel water separator right here we'll open that guy up there we go and we'll drain that just like so so the primary filter we loosen this nut again at the top and this piece comes through the bottom and we'll also take this piece apart and we'll clean this bowl this is made of glass this is the 3166 Napa Gold, baby. Come on here. Oh. <laughs> this primary filter, you can really see some of the sludging the nastiness and rust from the fuel tank. That's what's on the top of the primary filter. Clean everything really, really good before we put it back together. Okay, we'll remove the old O-ring from the glass bowl. Just like that. Woo. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to get done with this video today. <laughs> Dude, really? Well, here's the glass bowl. Isn't that cool? That's such a bummer. Oh, what a bummer. See you when I get a new glass bowl. <laughs> Amazon. You'll never guess what just happened. We just went out to Smith Tractor and got a brand spanking new one. Now, cross your fingers I don't drop this one. Let's get this thing reinstalled and prime it up. There we go. We'll reach up in here and we'll turn our fuel back on. Should start seeing fuel any time now. Starting to see a little bit of fuel in there. There's that fuel coming out the top. We'll get back over here. Let me snug everything up nice and tight. We've got fuel out the top of our primary filter. We'll tighten it up first and then we'll pump till we get fuel out of our secondary filter out the top of it. Okay. Oh, bust it again, man. Turn our fuel off. This is not the day. This is not the day for me. I tightened it down too tight and busted it again. <laughs> Seriously, dude? I'm gonna make another phone call. <laughs> the guides are against me here, man. What in the world? I'd have never thought I'd tighten it down that tight. Now we'll see you tomorrow. God. <laughs> it's the next day and we bought two of these uh, fuel bowls in case I mess up again which I don't think is going to happen. I got some tips from the tractor mechanics out there at Smith Tractor. It's a local tractor place that uh, really has a pile of parts, like trailers of parts. I'll post their phone number down in the video description. If you are looking for something rare or something on an older tractor that you can't find, odds are those guys have it. So 
right here. We're gonna go ahead and just reassemble everything. We're gonna pump our primer until we start seeing fuel. And then basically we're just gonna snug this guy down. The tip that they gave me is snug it down until you don't see fuel leaking and that'll be tight enough. Now what you really have to watch out for on these glass bowls, other than dropping them <laughs> and over tightening them, which I think I've given you a perfect example of what not to do, which is probably even a better learning lesson than teaching you how to do this. But what you need to think about here is if water gets in this in the winter time, this is a frequent thing to break if water gets down in this bowl. So you want to make sure you winterize, quote unquote, winterize your tractor and get the water out of the fuel water separator here so that this doesn't freeze and bust on you. Let's put it on. It's not rocket science, but I'll tell you what, I hope you guys learned from my uh, mistake here. Be careful with this thing. It will break. Very nice, no more fuel leakage. So there's a little bolt right here and we're gonna loosen this bolt up a little bit so that we get a little bit of fuel leakage. And that way we know we've got both of our filters full of fuel and we won't introduce air into the system. There's also one on the other side right here. It's a banjo bolt. We'll loosen that guy up. We'll go over and we'll start pumping a little bit of fuel into these. All right, as you can see, Got a nice little leak here. We'll tighten down our banjo bolt right there. We've got a pretty significant leak here. Also, we did not snug down our filter all the way yet. Want that filter to fill up with fuel. We'll close down this drain here. Bleed bolt. Basically, all we want to do is make sure that we're full here. So we want to make sure both of these are entirely full. And then we'll be ready to fire up the tractor. Got to rub in some of this long life tractor preservative. <laughs> Put our label on, changed at 850 hours. We're going to fire the tractor and pull her out of the shop. There's one final thing I want to show you before we pack it up and call it good with the tractor. I have some products that we use on battery terminals here on the farm that really, really work good. So let me show you. So we got two products that we use here on the farm to help maintain our battery terminals to keep them from corroding. This is a battery cleaner. It's basically spray baking soda and this is battery terminal protector. It's a terminal protection spray. You spray a couple coats on your battery terminals and then you don't have to worry about that gross corrosion that we have on our battery. I'll show you. So this is the terminal cleaner. All you do is just spray it on there and it rinses off all the bad corrosion. You can see it just eating it away. It's just spray baking soda, but it does a trick, it does a great job. We'll rinse this off with water. Once it's done, we're doing its job. It's just a water hose. If there's any corrosion left over, you just spray it on there again. Let the terminals dry. We'll hit them with a little wire brush. We'll give them a little coat of battery protectant. See that purple coat? So if we wanted to be super duper thorough, we could have taken those terminals off and cleaned them really good and brushed them and coated them. And I don't think we need to go quite that far after all. It is a tractor, it's a workhorse of the farm. Let's take you around the 240 and show it to you real quick. So once again, this is our Massey Ferguson 240 tractor. It's had a complete restoration, total new paint job. We've got about 856 hours on it total. Very, very nice tractor. Got a nice three point here. Does not have a secondary hydraulic on it and we definitely need that to run our hay rake so that'll be a future video hopefully installing a secondary hydraulic on this thing very nice power steering model really really nice tractor 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial on the 240 tractor. I hope if you're considering a purchase of a tractor similar to this, this will kind of enlighten you as to how to service a tractor, or if you have one just like this, it'll teach you how to service it. Pretty cool stuff. It'll also teach you <laughs> the wrong things to do. So what I did was accidentally drop that glass bowl and I over tightened it. So you only want to tighten that glass bowl until you stop the fuel from leaking and you want to keep a close eye on all this stuff as you use your tractor for the first few hours and make sure you don't have any fuel leaks or anything like that guys thanks a lot i appreciate you coming to the farm today please pound that like button subscribe to the channel and i hope to see you again here on the stony ridge all right Woo! Well, come on down to the stony ridge bring your wife and bring your kids we're living life pure and sweet that's the way it's supposed to be stony ridge <laughs> oh no! <laughs>